the blues and the greens of justinian by procopius 500 to 570 a.d from chapter seven of the secret history of the court of justinian this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. In the former part of my history, I have explained how the people had long been divided into two factions. Justinian associated himself with one of these, the Blues, which had previously favored him and was thus enabled to upset everything and throw all into disorder thereby the roman constitution was beaten to its knees however all the blues did not agree to follow his views but only those who were inclined to revolutionary measures yet as the evil spread these very men came to be regarded as the most moderate of mankind for they used their opportunities of doing wrong less than they might have done nor did the revolutionists of the green faction remain idle but they also as far as they were able continually perpetrated all kinds of excesses although individuals of their number were continually being punished this only made them bolder for men when they are treated harshly usually become desperate at this time justinian by openly encouraging and provoking the blue faction shook the roman empire to its foundation like an earthquake or a flood or as though each city had been taken by the enemy everything was everywhere thrown into disorder nothing was left alone the laws and the whole fabric of the state were altogether upset and became the very opposite of what they had been first of all the revolutionists altered the fashion of wearing the hair for they cut it short in a manner quite different from that of the rest of the romans they never touched the moustache and beard but let them grow like the persians but they shaved the hair off the front part of their heads as far as the temples and let it hang down long and in disorder behind like the massagate wherefore they called this the hunnic fashion of wearing the hair in the next place they all chose to wear richly embroidered dresses far finer than became their several stations in life but they were able to pay for them out of their illicit gains the sleeves of their tunics were made as tight as possible at the wrists but from thence to the shoulder were of an astounding width and whenever they moved their hands in applauding in the theatre or the hippodrome or encouraging the competitors this part of the tunic was waved aloft to convey to the ignorant the impression that they were so beautifully made and so strong that they were obliged to wear such robes as these to cover their muscles they did not perceive that the empty width of their sleeves only made their bodies appear even more stunted than they were the cloaks drawers and shoes which they mostly affected were called after the huns and made in their fashion at first they almost all openly went about armed at night but by day hid short two-edged swords upon their thighs under their cloaks they gathered together in gangs as soon as it became dusk and robbed respectable people in the market-place and in the narrow lanes knocking men down and taking their cloaks belts gold buckles and anything else they had in their hands some they murdered as well as robbed that they might not tell others what had befallen them these acts roused the indignation of all men even the least disaffected members of the blue faction but as they began not to spare even these the greater part began to wear brazen belts and buckles and much smaller cloaks than became their station lest their fine clothes should be their death and before the sun set they went home and hid themselves but the evil spread and as the authorities in charge of the people did nothing to punish the criminals these men became very daring for crime when encouraged to manifest itself openly always increases enormously 
seeing that even when punished it cannot be entirely suppressed indeed most men are naturally inclined to evil doing such was the behavior of the blues as for the opposite faction some of them joined the bands of their opponents hoping thus to be able to avenge themselves upon the party which had ill-used them some fled secretly to other lands while many were caught on the spot and killed by their adversaries or by order of the government a number of young men also joined this party without having previously taken any interest in such matters being attracted by the power and the license which it gave them to do evil indeed there was no sort of villainy known amongst men which was not committed at this time unpunished in the beginning men put away their own opponents but as time went on they murdered men who had done them no hurt many bribed the blues to kill their personal enemies whom they straightway slew and declared that they were greens though they might never have seen them before and these things were not done in the dark or by stealth but at all hours of the day and in every part of the city before the eyes as it might be of the chief men of the state for they no longer needed to conceal their crimes because they had no fear of punishment but to kill an unarmed passer-by with one blow was a sort of claim to public esteem and a means of proving one's strength and courage life became so uncertain that people lost all expectation of security for every one continually had death before his eyes and no place or time seemed to offer any hope of safety seeing that men were slain indiscriminately in the holiest churches and even during divine service no one could trust friends or relations for many were slain at the instance of their nearest of kin no inquiry took place into such occurrences but these blows fell unexpectedly on every one and no one helped the fallen laws and contracts which were considered confirmed had no longer any force everything was thrown into confusion and settled by violence the government resembled a despotism not a securely established one but one which was changed almost daily and was ever beginning afresh the minds of the chief magistrates seemed stricken with consternation and their spirits cowed by the fear of one single man the judges gave sentence on disputed points not according to what they thought to be lawful and right but according as each of the litigants was a friend or an enemy of the ruling faction for any judge who disregarded their instructions was punished with death many creditors also were compelled by main force to restore their bills to their debtors without having received anything of what was owing them and many against their will had to bestow freedom upon their slaves it is said that some ladies were forced to submit to the embraces of their own slaves and the sons of leading men who had been mixed up with these youths forced their fathers to hand over their property to them and to do many other things against their will many boys with their father's knowledge were forced to undergo dishonor at the hands of the blues and women living with their own husbands were forced to submit to the like treatment we are told that a woman who was not over well dressed was sailing with her husband in a boat towards a suburb across the strait they met on their way some men of this faction who took her away from her husband with threats and placed her in their own boat when she entered the boat together with these young men she secretly told her husband to take courage and not to fear any evil for her never said she will i permit myself to be outraged and while her husband was gazing on her with the greatest sorrow she sprang into the sea and was never seen again such were the outrages which the people of this faction dared to commit in byzantium 
yet all this did not so much gall the victims as justinian's offences against the state for those who suffer most cruelly from evil-doers are in great part consoled by the expectation that the law and the authorities will avenge them if they have any hope for the future men bear their present sufferings with a much lighter heart but when they are outraged by the established government they are naturally much more hurt by the evil which befalls them and the improbability of redress drives them to despair justinian's fault was not only that he turned a deaf ear to the complaints of the injured but did not even disdain to behave himself as the avowed chief of this party that he gave great sums of money to these youths and kept many of them in his own retinue that he even went so far as to appoint some of them to governments and other official posts End of the blue and the greens of justinian by procopius five hundred to five seventy a d